All right. Okay. So we're finally live. We are live in, in two places. We're live on Facebook Live uh, on the Body Shop page. We're already getting comments here on Instagram. Say hi. I can't see what the comments are. My, my eyes aren't that good. No, I can't either. <laughs> So we apologize that we're not going to be able to respond to your comments, but we want everybody on Instagram to be able to see it too. So anyway, um, so this is really my first interview. Okay. Obviously. Well, great. <laughs> we're here to get to know one another. <laughs> right. Um, so just to give some context here, um, you know, Ash and I have known each other for a couple of years now. We opened up the body shop yes. in Pittsburgh uh, two and a half years ago. And... So, I know, I think I've told you the story before, but I'm going to tell it again about my introduction to you. Okay. You remember this story? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> so, my introduction to you was, um, so right now we're sitting in the lounge uh, dining room of the club. Well, that didn't used to always be in here. If you remember, when we first opened, oh, yeah. where, the, where the media room is, mm -hmm. used to be the dining room. Right. So, this main thoroughfare... You, this used to be the main thoroughfare to come from the club into the back section. Uh huh. So I come walking down the hallway, and there's a big window. If you've not been here before, there's a big window. Uh huh. And I'm looking into what is at the time the dining room. And all I remember is <laughs> seeing you knelt down, and you were giving somebody head. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> but I think you were, but I think it wasn't, wasn't you were doing it like, um, like to just have sex with somebody. You were doing it like you were showing somebody like, this is how you deep throat or something like that. <laughs> Do you remember doing that? I think you were doing an instructional. I don't know. I think it might've been somebody taunted me and said he, I couldn't get him to come. So I, I did my best too. <laughs> I think I accomplished. <laughs> At the time, I had no idea um, that, that you actually did porn. I, I just, I was enamored with the fact that you were there doing that. And I'm like, wow, Pittsburgh is so different than Cleveland and Kent. <laughs> <laughs> These people are just crazy. And just, boom, right in the dining room. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suck your dick in front of everybody. And, and, uh, and I thought that was that We was have great. to encourage everybody to participate. <laughs> it's about having fun. Right. Yeah, so that was my, my initial introduction to you without actually knowing that, that you were doing, um, you know, that you were professional, mm -hmm. you know, in that regard. Am I allowed to say that? Is that okay? Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm curious, and, and we've talked a little bit about this before. Um, uh, could we talk about dancing? Yes. Okay. So, <clears throat> so you know, uh, everybody knows we haven't really put this in it, Put this together like we don't have a q a i didn't set this up with you obviously so no. a lot of this is just very um impromptu and and yeah. uh, ad lib anyway so my understanding is is that you started um before you got into um uh, doing movies you were doing uh dancing mm -hmm. is that, is that yeah i danced on the weekends yeah i picked it up for extra cash me and a girlfriend we decided it was a great idea to go work at Blush when it used to be Blush. It isn't anymore. Uh, changed ownerships. Okay. I had a really good time. I enjoyed it, but it gets rough. Like it's rough on you as far as like your knees and your feet and your knees and your feet. Yeah. From dancing. Right. Yeah. And walking up and down the steps and you do it on, doing yeah. It at heels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So really couldn't do it every day of the week, but it was a nice pickup and definitely different than just a vanilla life going nine to five in, uh, then I was also camming at the time. And it just, camming? yep. And it just, one thing happened after the next. And it, uh, cause I got to a certain comfort level. And uh, once I got, once I did cam, the videos were easy because I was already doing it at my home so, privately. So you were dancing and then how did you, so tell me how you got into camming. And what uh, was this, like how, like, what year are we talking about? Oh, it's been a long, year? I've been camming since camming started like in the nineties Wow! just okay. to pick it up, like come home from work at five o'clock and work two or three hours and have another paycheck. And, uh, yeah, I, I went to a few different sites, but then I think once I, I lost my main job and, sh and changed and went to school full time mm -hmm. when I was going to school full time, it was easier to just cam. What did you go to school for? 
Oh, business administration. Really? Yeah. Well, it's got to come in handy now, no? Uh, I, I, I think it was just the choice to have the degree. I don't know if I really enjoy that at all. The college part? No, no. No, I don't, I'm not a, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't see myself being a desk person. I'm much, much more interactive, obviously. <laughs> you, you enjoy that part? Mm -hmm. Interactive part. So you went to school for business administration, which that's something I did not know about you. That's, that's pretty exciting, you actually, so you have a college degree. Yes. You're way better than me. I've got a high school diploma. I don't have a college degree. Um, I was a DNF student. Nice. Uh, yeah, I aspired to be at the bottom of my uh, my uh, class. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you definitely got a leg up on there, uh, me. Um, so okay, so you were dancing, and you uh, kind of segued into the camming. Um, were you in, re in relationships? I'm assuming at that time. Yes, I'm married. Yeah, were mm -hmm. you married at that time also? Yes. How long have you been married? Twenty years. Twenty years. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah, good for you. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Um, so. Okay, so blush. Now you, I'm assuming you still don't dance. No, no. No, I'm. I just. I think what happened is, is you just get burnt out on certain things, and you have to take a break. Um, I wasn't enjoying myself anymore. So, if you're miserable, sometimes it's ready for a change. Right. Right. How long did you do that? The I don't know. Was it four or five years, maybe? Wow. You have any good stories? Always. <laughs> uh, I don't know how, how explicit I should get. You get explicit <laughs> as you want. What is, uh, short of illegal, how's that, if there's anything? Um, there. I'll go with the most bizarre incident. Okay. So I don't know his name. He would come in all the time. He stood in the corner. He's probably, he was a very big man. And when I say big, taller than six foot, like very tall man, black hair. He looked, he looked like a biker. And he was missing it. He had no arm. He had a stump. He had no arm. He had no arm. And he had a stump. <laughs> and he would fall. And he always wanted me to do dances for him. And I'm like, how weird is this? Okay. So I go in the back. He goes, can you just kick me in the balls? I'm like, are you sure about this? And he's like, yeah, just kick me. I did it once. He's no like harder than that. He gives me more money. So I kick him again. I was in there for three saw I made like 200 bucks I walk out I can't do this anymore I kicking this poor guy in the balls and he's loving every minute of it I get out there Wait, and the, you said you couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't do it Jesus anymore I couldn't take it anymore. no he wanted whatever I was giving I wasn't doing it hard enough but he was still tipping me <laughs> so I opened the little curtain and when the girls out there I'm like I can't do this anymore she's like I will and I heard her go in and she took over for me and I just the things I heard coming out of there it freaked me out I'm like Ooh, she's mean. <laughs> she, and she liked it. <laughs> but and that was he did too. Was, yeah. Was he older, younger? Like, you know, uh, time, like uh, probably. Uh, yeah, probably in his forties. Wow. But I just remember, and he still would come and seek me out. I guess because I have these tattoos and I'm I have dark hair. I look oh. like I'm going to dominate you. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. What that was a strange one. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Now, have you ever done that, like like pro dom stuff? Have you ever dabbled in that? Um, not really. I've watched other people do it. I just think it's a a mindset for people that are into that. Yeah. I'll watch. I'm much a voyeur. Some things interest me. I'll try them, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be something that I stick with. Right. You know. Right. You don't think you have the personality to be a, like a like. I'm I'm assuming when you say that you're not naturally dominant in that regard. No, I guess I just don't know. Or you don't want to hurt people. No. Mm -mm. No. Not really. How about make them feel bad? I try. <laughs> I, I I get a lot of uh, small penis humiliation on my <laughs> cam sometimes, and I'm like, do you really want me to make fun of your small penis? Because it is really that small. <laughs> I mean, I, just saying that it would make you feel bad. Do I? Do you really want me to continue? Mm -hmm. So I just I I guess because it, it's the way it makes me feel. Even though it's it's arousing that that person, I just can't That's get it out of myself. <laughs> so you feel bad. They really do have a small penis, and you, but you feel bad making fun of it. Yeah, even if they want you to, because it's a fetish. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Now here's a, here's a better question. Have you ever 
Uh, okay, so I don't understand the camming all that well. So I don't, uh, I'm assuming, can you see the person that you're camming with? Yes, sometimes you can. They can choose to, like like we're doing here, mm -hmm. I, another window will pop up and I'll see that person, okay. like a Skype show. So, and I'm just morbidly curious, have you ever had somebody who was well endowed and said, hey, I want you to make fun of my small penis? Yes. Yeah, I yes, but the, I don't understand how this is going to work. I mean, I just have to make up a whole bunch of fibs. <laughs> Like you're looking at a huge penis and you're like, look at that tiny penis of yours. I've had where there's guys that you know that they did something to the screen to make their dick look big. And it's so fake big. How you're like, that that's happen? not real. How there's no happen? way that looks that real. So how does somebody make their dick look big? Um, I think, I, it, I think, I think it's the camera <laughs> angle. You got to go from down low and then you hoard it up here in it. <laughs> now, did they, now, okay. So that's a good segue into, um, uh, adult films. So do they do that in adult films also? Because it seems like every, uh, virtually every porn I've ever watched or adult film I've watched, the guy's huge. Um, I'm sure you can get a good camera angle and you can make it look better. It's, it, it, a good example is like titties. Mm -hmm. They can look like regular titties or you can make them gonzo. Depending on the, on the uh, angle. angle. So I'm sure <clears throat> I work the same way with a dick. Hmm. Okay. So, so would you say that most of the people you've worked with in the industry are relatively well endowed? Um, I mean, obviously you've not had little dick, you've not done little dick porn. I'm you have to at least be average or better. And I think sometimes it's how you handle yourself. Okay. Yeah. That's, I think that's the main concern. What your entertainment value, how you handle yourself. Okay. Not that we want small penises, but you know, where I'm going with that. And at least average. <laughs> Define average, because if you say eight, I'm going to be really upset. <laughs> I was going to go six to eight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm on the lower end of that, but I'll take it. <laughs> but again, I went back to. I aspire to be average. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay. So we got stubby guy at the, at the, at the strip club that went and kicked in the balls. That is a pretty flipping. Now, have you ever, have you had other people that want that? Like, like come so I want to make sure I get this right. This is at the at the club, and like I'm assuming like a, I I only know it as a champagne room or like a VIP room or right. whatever. So have you had other people come in and want stuff like that, like just off the wall, like I want you to spit on me or? Um, I don't know so much myself, but I've heard stories. I've seen and heard things, but eh, again, I'm a voyeur, so I I love it. I'll watch it. I don't care. <laughs> So did you watch her kicking him in the balls or you just, you were outside and heard it? I could hear it. I think that was enough for me. Cause I know at one point I kicked him in the balls and I felt the ball move inside the sack underneath the shoe. You know, there's a little bit oh, of you had shoes on when you were doing Oh yeah. <laughs> you thought I was barefoot? Yes. Oh no, that had my stripper shoes on. That's why I wanted to stop. I'm like, he's going to have to go to the emergency room. You broke your shoe. <laughs> <laughs> and the ball left. <laughs> <laughs> wow is anybody so I, i'm just asking questions as they pop into my head has anybody like at the at the at the club when you were dancing like had a heart attack or anything like that like you've had, had oh i got a good story okay. so the girls had a tendency to drink and no, you wait for your on. you wait because everybody wants that everybody thinks a drunk stripper is a better stripper you know because you're going to get more things out of it but anyway Meaning the guys think that i think Everybody thinks that when they go in a strip club, but that's just me. Uh, so we had a gr new group of girls that came in mm -hmm. and they were auditioning and they got up on stage and the one girl was smashed. And at the time, and there still is, there's, there's um, stools right in front of the uh, platform there. So you're like right at shoe level. So she's dancing. She trips on the lip. Mm -hmm of the uh, stage and she fell forward onto everybody and I she broke herself so bad I don't know how I don't know what happened to her they called the ambulance she fell on a chair in such a way I'm surprised she didn't break her back you know they never did anything for that poor girl she was good okay put her in the ambulance that's it, it was your fault because you were drinking so that was like one of those instances where 
Wow, that's really screwed up. Well, it's interesting because that seems like, <clears throat> well, number one, I, I, my understanding is when you dance a club, you, they call you independent contractor. Yeah. You have to pay to, you, you actually have to pay to dance, correct? Mm hmm I mean, and I'm assuming every club's got a little bit different. Or mm -hmm. whatever, but yeah. We're all independent contractors. But when you said that, it reminded me, there's a lot of, like, like bigger corporations now where if you get injured at work, you're immediately getting drug tested and, you know, they're going to make sure you're not drunk or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think the drug testing is a little disingenuous because if you're, I'm not a pot smoker and I don't do drugs and I, I don't begrudge anybody who does. My, my dad is probably one of the biggest pot smokers in the world. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you could have smoked two days ago, three days ago, a week ago. My understanding is that when you smoke, it's in, it could be in your system mm -hmm. for 30 days. Right. Well, if you get hurt at work a week after you smoked a joint with some friends over the weekend, they're going to be like, well, hey, sorry, you got you got weed in your system and, we, you know, you're not going to eat your workers' comp. And I kind of think that's bullshit. Yeah, uh, I agree. But I think what for me, they I think that the club should have extended some type of courtesy to her because she did get hurt on the premises work. and it is their responsibility not to oh, give the girls too many drinks but obviously someone was allowing it mm -hmm. so yeah i guess they're probably fortunate in a way that she didn't come back and you know try and sue them for medical i don't know i don't know she just never came never back talk about that. no they would never talk you wouldn't want to talk mm -hmm. about it that's kind of the dirty side of, of that oh of yeah the clubs. any bad stories you know, since we're kind of segueing into the into into that. I mean, that's obviously a terrible story, but, you know, you worked at, at Blush. Did you work at any other clubs? No, not really. No? No, I just stayed at Blush. Okay. Yeah, it was it was nice. Hmm. It's really nice now. When I first started there, it wasn't as nice. They renovated it, and it just changed ownership, but uh, it's different now. Hmm. Like, the business is different, or the club? You're just saying the club itself is different. The club's different. It's yeah. run completely different cleaner you think or better yeah I think it's cleaner it's more professional the girls are cleaner they're you know uh, <clears throat> a different kind of classy stripper okay instead of just like dirty stripper <laughs> so I'm assuming you, go, you, do you do you go to strip clubs now no I had enough yeah I mean just to go visit I mean do no you... I don't want to go no yeah, no because so. I'm I have fifty dollars once my fifty ones are gone I'm sorry, girls, I don't have nothing else for you. Then they're done with you anyway because you didn't have no more money. Really? <laughs> now, were you, were you ever caught in situations like that where you're, where you're sitting with somebody and you know, maybe spending a lot of time with them and then realize they don't have any money or they're running out of money or whatever? I mean, I mean, I understand. Oh, yeah, uh, well, I, I, I think, that, I think that happens to everybody yeah. because it, it was always, um, I remember we would go like, don't go over there. You just tell somebody, the other girls are getting like, as soon as you walk away from somebody, you immediately already had the, well, you know, the story behind that person. Right. Like, don't go over there. <laughs> we, have, we have people like that at the club. <laughs> like, don't go. Don't go talk to that person. You're going to get locked in for the next two hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny because that, that happens to us all the time. You know, we're running around here and, and inevitably you get caught with somebody and, and, they talk and they don't talk in a way that you like there's a pause and it's just talk, 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 and you're, like, you're looking for that trying to slowly walk away and, and like hey great i'll talk to you no i'll talk to you later and then yeah <laughs> now you get right back in walking backwards <laughs> <laughs> see you bye-bye bye-bye <laughs> i gotta go actually the great thing is and i'm gonna say this out loud we were, we were radios a lot of times here at the club and i can't tell you how many times i have fake what oh hold on one second Oh, oh yeah, that's yeah. an awesome idea. I gotta go. I gotta go. That's 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 <laughs> the same thing you do in the gym. You wear the headset, even if there's no music on. You have an automatic like. Well, oh, did you? Oh, were you talking? Oh no. <laughs> okay. Right. Does that happen to you a lot at the gym? Do you get do you get hit on a lot at the gym? Um, no, not really. No. I just I mind my own business. I know the the regular people that are there, and that's cool. Uh, but no. I, I, you know what? I'll be honest. It's the old guys, like hey, six, <laughs> like seventy-ish. Oh, okay. Really? With their like, like my dad old. Like caught, but they're smart. It's like going to the strip strip club, but you don't have to pay anything. You still can look at the hot girls, have your free coffee, get, <laughs> get on your machine, <laughs> your get your free coffee, and chill out. 
Oh. You know, and 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 talk really? with all the old old guys. That I think it's a great idea. For the old guys, you mean? Yeah. Because hmm. when the young girls come in, it's like they're pick me up for the day. They're waiting to see what you know. <laughs> Jenny, like what line, Jenny's is wearing like today? A bench, like a like a like a basketball bench, and they're all sitting there waiting for the girls to come in. And they, no, they, they have their. They like I think they have in. their assigned machines like. He, he sits, you know, John sits on the chest press machine. Jimmy's over on the leg press. I'll go. So they're like bird dogging all over. Yeah, the yeah. So they're like, oh, yeah, we got one. Okay, you got that one over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. As you can tell, I haven't been to a gym in a long time, so. Well, it's never too late to start. <laughs> <laughs> it is when you're dead. Don't talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> um so obviously you work out how many times a week do you work out i'm not working out as much as i used to maybe four days a week so that's quite a bit yeah um i I'm like it though i mean you only got three extra days so i'm assuming you worked out seven days a week at some <laughs> point we used to not anymore okay now do you so you're married do you go with your husband uh sometimes yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's in pretty good shape yeah yeah so, you know, let's circle back to, we met you here at the club. Mm. <clears throat> um, what is your relationship to the lifestyle, like um, you and your husband, if I can ask that? If you uh, want to talk about it. And if you don't, that's fine. No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, I was going to ask if, can we take a real quick break? Um, sure. Yeah, we'll stay live. Go ahead and do it. Too. Yeah. yeah. I'll be right back. Hold on, hold on. Oh, we can turn the clip. Right. Oh, my gosh. There you go. So we're taking a real quick break here. We're going to stay live, though. Yada, 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 and yada, yada, yada. <laughs> I can't see that far. I'm, I, I have my, my cue card person behind me. I bet I can't see... So we're, I can't see what the questions are. I know, I'm sure. Oh, you can? Oh, okay. Well, then feed them to us. You can talk. Oh. Oh, so yeah, while we're on break there, if anybody's got any questions, uh, my assistant, Mary Lou, <laughs> are you watching it live? Okay, so you can see the questions. So yeah, just feed us the questions. So when she comes back, we'll do some, we'll do some of your uh, your questions uh, if you have any. So ask them. Are you on Are you on Instagram? Watching. Okay. So if if those of you that are on Instagram, uh, if you have questions, go ahead and, and uh, type them in, and Mary Lou is going to feed them to me while while we're watching. How many people are watching? I can't even tell. A lot. Not a lot. A lot. You can talk. <laughs> okay. All right, for the seven of you that are watching <laughs> live, <clears throat> so yeah, we have this little impromptu break. So okay, so Mary Lou just said some of you are asking who we're interviewing. So this is Ashton Blake. Um, Ashton Blake is a, uh, I'll say a local celebrity. Um, uh, Ashton Blake does uh, adult films. Uh, nationally, she's uh, you can look her up on Google, uh, probably Pornhub and all that. <clears throat> uh, she was here last night at the club doing Party with a Porn Star, and what she does with that is um, she does live webcamming here from the club, and we've been doing that for I don't know, almost a year now. Actually, I think about a year. Um, and she does about once a month, once a, every six weeks or so and very popular we have a really good time with that <coughs> um there is there are some questions that i've uh got from a few people before excuse me before we uh, started the interview that i'm going to ask her also but uh how are we doing i'm good yeah gotta stop for gotta, gotta have a pee break <coughs> sorry that's okay you want to that wasn't me that? that's the couch <laughs> I don't know. Oh, we were talking about um, the lifestyle and how I got into it, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that's okay. So let me see if I can connect everything. So you've been married for twenty years. You danced and you cammed, and you did uh, adult films all while you were married. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so that's probably how long have you been in the lifestyle? Or would you, by lifestyle, I mean, participating in... I think we dabbled in our 20s. I don't know if I was quite so as ready. early on. Yeah, like in our 20s. <clears throat> and they didn't have all the applications and opportunities to have a connection with people. You had to really go out on a limb to go see somebody. You had to go out to dinner. You had to go to somebody's house. And then you're thinking, how shady is that? I don't want to go to somebody's house. I hardly <laughs> know. Did you but, remember, did you guys have the magazines? With all the different um, ads, the pictures there was there was a, a, a there was a magazine that we had in Ohio. I'm from Cleveland originally. Uh-huh. It was called Ohio Connection magazine, and you would open it up, and you would literally have to. There was hundreds and hundreds of. It was the, it was the print version of, like an online dating site, but it was for. Couples. No, I don't know if we ever did that. Um, I don't know. Maybe you have better answer for that. Do you remember that? We're, we're talking to uh, Mr. No, Blake. how do we... Our fir- first story is actually quite good. We were 21, she was only 17, and she's still your best friend 30 years later. Yeah, well, I guess so. I didn't so. think about that one. Well, we were just talking in general. Yeah. I don't remember how we hooked up with our first few couples. Yeah. Did we have, like, a magazine, or did we do something online? Was it online? So like probably like uh, like a like a swing lifestyle or something like that. What was it? It was was a uh, connection online. Because that's the first that's the adult, first site I remember. Connection something. Yeah, there. Oh no, adult friend finder. That's, that's adult it. Friend finder. Yes. yes. Yeah. Adult, gosh, I never really did anything on adult friend finder, so I I um I'm not overly familiar. I think I jumped on a couple times and it, it seemed like the wild, wild west of crazy. <laughs> like these just, there was just like ads and, 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 uh, uh, profiles and everything all over the place. I, I couldn't, I could, it was like a jumbled mess to me. So talking about some interesting things, since we've been in the lifestyle for a while, we've come in and out. Mm-hmm. Um, I cam for a while. We would occasionally find some other girls online that I could cam with. Mm-hmm. And um, her name was Vixen, I believe. Yes. Vixen. Yes. And I oh. met her online. Wait, wait. And we, Mr. Blake was clapping at that one, so that must have been a good one. No. And so we meet. We f- meet this other couple. They come into Pittsburgh. We meet. We hang out. And uh, we decide we're going to go to Virginia. We, we go to their house. And her and I cam together in their master bedroom. Mm-hmm. We're probably in our late 20s. Okay. Okay. So we get out of that, we leave, we haven't talked to him for a while, and all of a sudden, uh, we were online. What was the name of that? He hadn't talked to them in probably 10 plus years, if not more. And we were looking through Swing Lifestyle, SLS. Yes. Mm-hmm. Planning for an event. And looking at pictures, you know, you put the few pictures, just neck down photos. Right. And I'm like, I know I know that tattoo from somewhere. <laughs> and I'm like, they're little kitty paws. Uh-huh. I think we know them. Okay. They live from Virginia. So we contact them. Here, it's, it's them. We hadn't seen them for 10 years, and then we end up seeing them again. And I think it was a friction party. Was it friction? I don't remember. But it's always coincidental how you... Was Pittsburgh? No. Uh, no, friction, I think, was Philadelphia. Oh, yes. Philly friction. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They, were, they, they started... Uh, probably not the first hotel party. Actually, the first hotel party I went to was 20 some years ago. But yeah, Philly Friction was like, they really got pretty big pretty fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, hmm. But uh, yeah, it's, it's funny how you'll meet people in, in and out of the lifestyle. Some people will stay at certain locations. But it, it's nice because I feel like most people we meet, you know, are like, hey, it's great to see you. Mm-hmm. It's nice to know that, you know, everybody's having a great time and still enjoying themselves. Right. Yeah. So you said you kind of have been in and out of lifestyle. Is that because you, you said you started a little younger, you were kind of dabbling in it a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I, I don't know if, I, I don't think I knew what I wanted out of it. Okay. I think it took time for me as I got older to have the confidence level to, to know collectively as a couple what we wanted out of it. Because mm-hmm. you have to decide those are your rules, right. not anybody else's rules, your rules on how you want your lifestyle uh, to be. Are we allowed to talk about that? Mm-hmm. So what are your rules? Like what, so what is a lifestyle for you? If I can, you know, if we can talk about well, that. Well, I guess I would say him and I are 
full swap, but with same room mm -hmm. and uh, always safe sex, right. you know. Uh, but we're not normally the type of people that we meet you that day and just go do something. It's very rare. I th I'm, a, I'm a warmer upper, not a, not a. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that's because of your background in terms of like the dancing and the camming and, and the adult films that you're not, that you want to develop? What I hear you saying is you want to develop more of a, a relationship with the people? I think, it, yes, because it's the opposite. Okay. It's a complete, th this is me as my private self and then Ashton. We're two different people. Okay. You know, so Ashton's more of a stage face. Mm -hmm. And then you have my mine personal life. So maybe that's why I handle it that way. Okay. So, any, so you've been in lifestyle for a number of years. Um, any jealousies, stuff like that? I mean, you know, I've talked to, I mean, I've been doing this 18 plus years. So I've talked to a lot of couples and some fall in and out and, and some they love it, but then some people, they deal with bouts of jealousy and stuff like that. Like either I don't know if there's really, any, we've never really had jealousy. Uh, I think it's communication, especially when you're with a group mm -hmm. to make sure you're always open with one another. If you can't speak to one another or you have to have an out, like if you're both not really having, no, feeling no. that you have to have, <clears throat> I guess it comes right back to communication. What? What are your options when you're in a situation where you like a couple or you maybe they're not a fit? Mm -hmm. You know, and that doesn't that, just because somebody's not a fit doesn't mean I don't like you. It just doesn't mean that Physically, there's. Yeah. yeah, right. Exactly. Do you, do you find it's difficult to and this this has been my experience and many couples that I've talked to in the lifestyle. Do you find it's difficult to find a couple where both of you click? Yes. You know, the four actually that, it has to be the four of you. Really, mm -hmm. when you think about it, four people have to all click together. Right. Yeah, no, that's the that's the hard part, and um, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. You may you may like people more once you get to know them, or you may be like, ah, this isn't for, still isn't the right. Like initially, people. you have like lust at first sight, and then like I, I have this has been my experience. You have like lust at first, like oh man, well, well, look at that couple or you know that woman or whatever, and you're like, and then they start talking, and you're like, eh, not my not no, your fit, not for you. I don't know. No. I understand, and that's. That's the hard part about it, but I mean, I still keep, we still keep coming back because we always have fun. Mm -hmm. And a majority of people that we've made friends in, the, we have more friends that are in lifestyle than we do what we would call vanilla friends or normal average friends, because at least with the, with people in the lifestyle, most are more open-minded and less judgmental, I think. Yeah. Has that been your experience? Yeah. Any bad experiences in that regard? Like, I don't know, mean necessarily hookups, but just in general, I mean... You know, I know there's a lot of people that are probably watching this or going to watch this and that have never dabbled in this before. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what would be the best example of something that didn't really work out well. Hmm. So have you ever had a So here's a question. You, know, you think about that. Have you had a situation like where you're really attracted to the guy and your husband's not really attracted to the girl? Uh, and I've heard people use the term taking one for the team. Either one of you I think that. I think we all we both have. Yeah. You know, um, we uh, one of our maybe second or third uh, tries. <laughs> we went to a couple's house. Mm -hmm. We were all in the living room. We we're getting ready to play, and all of a sudden, now this is what was even worse. She starts crying, and I'm like, I'm feeling bad because my husband's supposed to be with her. And then she decides she needs to run up the stairs and go into the bedroom. And I'm like, well, this thing's not turning out too well, is it? <laughs> you know, you, and obviously that shuts down everything because you just, out of just respect for that person, you can't continue. Yes, yes that was the one, that was the one you took the hit, the biggest hit for. Wait, so did you actually end up hooking up with the couple? No. No, because okay. so we never really, we never even really off. talked over why she got upset. Well, we were uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying to. She went upstairs crying and never came back down, so we finished. So we were in the middle of it. Oh, okay. So you guys were in the middle of it, like, and I'm like, well, I mean, I do remember that, but I felt bad. I was, I, we kind of the guys finished. I just felt bad that she's like, I don't know what happened. I. Sometimes you don't know what happens or what triggers certain things, what somebody's thinking, like maybe they're trying to 
have they're really not having fun they think they wanted to do it and then all of a sudden you just don't want to and there again she should have communicated so so we so would have known you're, saying is you're you're hooking up with the guy yeah mr blake is hooking up with the girl uh -huh. and just out of nowhere she just bolts. gets up and leaves hmm. yeah, i'm just hideous <laughs> <laughs> it's okay you can jack off on your wife that's fine <laughs> i'm good for something Wow, that's that's interesting. And that was you had gone to their house to do that. Mm -hmm. it was just mm -hmm. wow, yeah. That's something I haven't. You know, I, I've been to a couple of house parties, uh, but I don't. I can't think of a time, and I, I could be misremembering, but I don't, I don't remember a time where I actually just went to somebody's house, like with a to another couple, and, and to a cup. And I'm not judging. I know a lot of people do that. No, we we planned on it. Like we, they made dinner. We, you know, we hung out a little bit. We had already kind of maybe thought we wanted to give it a shot. Mm -hmm. And I was ready. I mean, I like both of them. So it was, I don't know. I, all I know is it comes back and I tell everybody this. You better always communicate with your significant other, whomever. Even if it's not your husband. Maybe it's just a friend you're taking to the club or a, a, a new boyfriend or girlfriend. If you don't talk, it's just a... It's going to be a bad situation. Yeah, and that's we talk to a lot of couples about that. I get I feel phone calls all the time where you know couples are genuinely curious about what happens here, mm -hmm. and then you know, excuse me, we'll have people show up, and I, I this doesn't happen a lot, but it's happened a few times, and where a couple will show up, and one of the other doesn't know what they're walking into, mm -hmm. like they've maybe talked about it, but then like the husband. Or the or the wife or girlfriend will like oh no I don't like the, this and they have they have no idea what they're walking into and that's, yeah that's very very that could be very dangerous mm -hmm. um, not dangerous like you're gonna kill dangerous but just dangerous that it's not that's not how you should operate right you have to have some respect for the people that are already here even if things aren't really your not really something you want to do I think you still should you know respect their what they want to do too it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't always when I don't always want to participate, but I would watch. <laughs> I love to go back in the rooms and just, just take a peek. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You never know. Okay, so so here in that vein, is it exciting for you to watch your husband with with somebody else? I don't know. Oh, I don't know if I watch you. <laughs> <laughs> You're too busy I'm busy with, with my own stuff. <laughs> So you've never. So if you had pussy in front of your face, so you, I don't think you'd be turning around wearing. <laughs> he's doing. I don't know. So actually, I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, I'll tell you a story that actually a, a, a situation sort of hand. So for me, I like to watch. I like to watch my wife with somebody else, and, but I was in a situation one time where uh, it was a, a couple took up, and I was trying to watch, you know, my wife, and this girl was like, she literally grabbed my face. Turned and she's like, "No, you pay attention to me." Oh. And I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little awkward, um, but yeah. So I've had uh, weird situations like that. Well, that was probably the weirdest one. Well, no, I've had a lot of weird situations. So what's the weirdest weird thing you've What's the weirdest thing you've seen or participated in or whatever in the lifestyle? Do you have one? weirdest i don't like, know that we have anything like really weird like, like stubby arm kind of weird and we're not making fun no, of people I, have stubby arms. no <laughs> i i don't know could have been a, if it's something i've seen would have to be the guy that injected his balls with saline Dude, don't, wait what wait what <laughs> no that, i'm talking about what i saw not right. what i participated right. in Injected his balls with saline. Yeah, they want it's a fetish where they want their balls to be big, and they're humongous, like humongous. Look now, you're gonna look it up because you don't I think. I'm gonna look it up. That's look it up. So in the lifestyle, has anybody ever asked you to do something that you're like, and eh, nah, I don't do that? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> but I normally I'm pretty good about asking people up front. up front what are you into what do you like i want to know before i get into 
-hmm. a situation where it's going to be uncomfortable and I have to explain myself. Right, or you got to pump the brakes in the middle. Yeah, of exactly, time. exactly. Hmm. Now, have you been in situations? We're talking. You said, you know, normally it's a couples hookup. Do you ever like hook up with singles? You know, like where? You're well, no, I don't think we. Uh, or vice versa? Well, no, not really. I mean, maybe when we were younger, we pick up the occasional girl. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It's just it's difficult. Oh, we're <laughs> I'm being shown pictures of ginormous balls right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you hand oh, me wow. my phone, please? <laughs> the the my phone, please. It just went off. Oh yeah, I heard it. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, must, here. Uh, can I? Yep. Sorry, it's my guy that we're doing photos today, and I just want to pick it up real quick. There. Oh, there it is. There it is. No, I need that. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. She got, a, she got a private phone and a hoe phone. <laughs> you know, because some people, they don't take, some people don't take no for an answer. And then if they already have your number, you're screwed. Right. Well, you can block it now. <laughs> so do we have any questions? Did you write anything down? No, nobody's asking questions. Uh, I don't know if I could read what was up on the Instagram. I might have been able to answer no, something. Well, well Mar Mary Lou's watching the Instagram also. So oh, okay. But nobody. So, Okay. Um, so you pretty much just hook up with couples. Um, you've been in the lifestyle for a number of years. So I'm going to ask you a question that I was asked to ask you. Uh, one of the questions is, who is the most famous person you have in your phone uh, contacts? My if, if you can say. Huh. I, I, you know, I always was a real, I loved Kendra Lust. I don't know if you know who she is. Mm -mm. Uh, but she's a porn star, and I always felt it was really nice that I have her personal number. Yeah. You know, it made me feel kind of cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brianna oh, Brianna Banks. Banks. Yeah, and her yeah. too. And there's some bigger names. You know, they, they've done a lot more than I have. But, mm -hmm. you know, everybody gets starstruck. Because I, when I did my first scene, it was with Kieran Lee. And, I mean, I love Kieran Lee. And I was so nervous, you know, I'm like, how am I going to do this? this oh, very first scene, first scene ever. ever. Like, I, I have no acting skills whatsoever, but that sex was a lot of fun. <laughs> and it shows. Because <laughs> I like him. I always liked him because he was just a regular guy and he was funny. Okay. Everybody always thinks you've got to have like this stellar body or something. But I fall for a great personality. Not, I don't, I'm not saying that I want the small penis, but, you know, it could make okay. it. It was, Yeah. So what, what's the person's name again? Kieran Lee. He's very big. He works with Brazzers most of the time. Okay. I think he travels between the United States and Europe. Now, do you do you do you, do you stay in contact with a lot of people you've worked with? Not really, because it's the it's such a uh, you know fast moving business that once you they'll never pair you with the same male talent. Really. You know more than once. Okay, so we have our first question from Instagram. So the question is, just to say, I don't know if you guys picked that up, um, what advice would you give a new couple who is, well, obviously new to the lifestyle, other than communication, is there anything else that you would recommend them doing or not doing? When they're I, I think that you should have the confidence to, if, if there is a couple you like, to approach them and introduce yourself. Um, it never hurts even to, just talking to people in general at the club helps you, um, find out what your interests are where you would do you do you want to do you know full swap do you want to be alone do you want to um you know maybe you want to do try bdsm or maybe you want to try something new if you never talk to anybody about it how are you going to know where your limits are what are you where, where are you what do you want i think what do you want right. do, you, do you find and let me just ask so you said about limits do you find that you're Okay, so I know for me, as I, I've gotten older, <clears throat> I've sort of shrunk down the things that I was interested in. When I was 18 years old, I, I could have drilled a hole in the wall and had sex <laughs> with it. Um, you know, but as I've gotten older, I've sort of shrunk those things down, and, and I've got it down to these are like my core things that turn me on. Do you find, have you expanded your limits, or have, have you kind of honed these things down? Like, these are the things I want to do, and I only want to do these things. In terms of uh, participating in a lifestyle, 
No, I I don't know if I'm open to more things. I'm I'm still open to more things. It's just finding those right people to do those things with. Does that make any sense? Sure. Like if if my husband and I were to do a threesome, like him and another guy and myself, or Mm -hmm. him and me and another girl, it's finding that right person that's going to fit into your your circle and that you communicate well and you're having fun. It's again, and then you don't have to worry about bad things happening. And we've had that happen. We had someone lie to us in a fake name. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. That was interesting. That glad you had. What do you mean? I'm just afraid. Are we allowed I, to say? Can we say this? Well, we won't mention any names, names right? obviously. But uh, we, we've met a lovely single woman that I was attracted to. She was attracted to me. And Monty was attracted to her. So we decided we were going to meet in a hotel down by PNC Park. We got together, we hung out. We really didn't play. We just kind of like talked a lot and got to know each other. So then we decided we were gonna go out to dinner and we met her out for dinner and I decided to go, to go on Facebook and Google. Well, I found her picture, but that's not her name and that's not what she does. And extensively lied about her job. It was just horrible. She lied about everything. Then we went out a second time with her after we had figured all this out. We decided not to say anything. But then <clears throat> she put down her credit card to pay for dinner. Mm-hmm. I have good eyes. <laughs> I could see the name. Oh. Uh, and so then, well, sorry, no, actually, I, I was out of order. We saw the name when we were out to dinner. Then you did the research. Yes, the that's right. I'm sorry. Okay. So why so, go to all that length to lie? That's another thing you like you have to do a, 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 that's what I mean by getting to know somebody. Was she was she married then? Is no. That, so she was just laying out about everything as she was. Yeah. You know, and who it was and, and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's just enough for me to say, uh uh-uh, uh. That's not the type of person. To the point where this was prior to my vasectomy. Oh my gosh, yes. She lied that she was a doctor. A surgeon. Oh. And we said, I can just do that for you. It's so easy. (laughs) I was, but that, do you, how far were you willing to go? This was nuts. That's, that's, that's the, like the, um, the the obligatory getting caught in lies and having to lie more in order to cover, like, what is she going to do? Go rent a doctor's office and, you know, put on a white coat and come out and put up in your balls. I mean, how far does that really go? The the lies were so deep and so involved. It would have required actual work to keep things in order. She was, was she using, she said she had a twin sister. She lied about a twin sister too. So anyway, that's, that's. You asked if anything really weird or that's, that's, that's a weird one, right? I, learning, learning. That's all I'm saying. Hmm. Mm-mm. So go back to the, the question I asked you about your contacts. Is there anybody outside of um, the adult film industry that you've met? Like, um, uh, I don't know, like a vanilla, a vanilla actor, like Matthew McConaughey or oh, something like that. Have you you got it right. You got the right one right there. That's the one you want? Oh, my God. <laughs> Man, you know, kind of the rule with him is, and I say this, you can just talk to me. I love him so much. I wouldn't even need to suck his dick. You could just talk to me. I'd probably <laughs> orgasm. I'd look at you and be like. So do you play like the thread of his like commercials? <laughs> when he's in the Lincoln? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm assuming you His Lincoln his commercials. Contact, I'm like, yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm driving your car. <laughs> could, you, could you be a stalker for Matthew McConaughey? I don't think I'm a stalker. No, I couldn't do that. I I know that it would take me a while. If I knew him personally, it would take me a while to relax. Because you always, when you're starstruck, you're still always like. Right, right. Like, you're so nice. So if somebody's phone were open and and you knew they had Matthew's number in it, you wouldn't go in there and. No, I wouldn't do that. No, no, that's too weird. I'm not going to be that person. I'm not going to be the the lying doctor with the twin sister. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Let's see. Do you like, what does it say? Do you like theme parties and what's your favorite? Oh, okay. So this is an Instagram question? Oh, Instagram question. What are your favorite events? Uh, do you like the theme parties? Do you like just regular parties? Or do you have a favorite event, a type of event? 
I do like I like the glow parties. I and and here's I'm going to give you why I don't like black part blackouts. Because blackout. you can't see anybody, <laughs> and you get you're getting fake representation. So well, that's where I go with that. But okay, everybody has their thing. I do like the theme nights if you do disco or whatever, or even black or uh, white night. The white, um, the white party. Uh, I can't remember what else there were some of the other themes that you've done here. So when we talk about, when you say the black party, I'm assuming... Black we do, out. We do two black parties or blackout parties. We do the, the blackout party in the main room where it's just kind of really dark. And then we do the deviance in the dark, which is where we have the room that you go into where it's completely pitch black, where you can't see anything or anybody. See, I, I can tell you this right now. I won't go in there. Right. Well, I, that's no, just because that. I'm not, that's wouldn't be my type of thing. Mm -hmm. So there I have my limit. And I, I just don't like the <laughs> black. Do I don't like the, the you dark. You do a blindfold thing. No. No. Mm -mm, no. Maybe if I was with friends, at least say there were 10 people in the and room, but I knew all 10, right. then at least I knew nobody was going to try to like stick their finger in my asshole without be like, hey, <laughs> woo. <laughs> <laughs> at least spit on it. <laughs> right. Come on. Can you put that in loop? First? And I, I should know you well enough. I'd know who'd do that. It would be my husband. <laughs> He'd be the first one at it. He'd be like, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody else would ask permission. He'd okay, be so like, hey. I got it. since you said that, I've got to talk about this. This already. So I've gotten a ton of um, uh, adult films from, from your husband, and some of them are of you, obviously. But there is a running theme to probably 80% of the, the movies that he's given me. And, and we play them on the screen. And at some point throughout the night, somebody says, do you have anything other than anal? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not going to lie to you. If, if that's the option for, if that's offered, it's definitely going to take, and he's going he's gonna to take that advantage. <laughs> Wait, we're, I think we have a caveat here. What? <laughs> In my defense. A lot of them are nearly an hour long, and you figure the night is only, what, four hours long, five hours long? So you're only playing in tops maybe seven videos. But I'm going to say <laughs> some of those videos, it's like, I can take this cup and put it in. It's like gaping, you know. I mean, I've had people like, really? There's a champagne bottle in her butt. <laughs> can we, can we, I've never tried that. I don't know form? if I ever want to. <laughs> you Dude, there, there's like gigabytes and gigabytes of porn. I couldn't watch all that porn in probably five years if I watched it straight. There is so much I like porn. big wet butts. <laughs> yes. I yes, like yes. I like oily butts, like when they get the girls sitting on the couch and you just keep pouring it on. I watch that. I love that. I want to I want to participate <laughs> like in one the of those. Oily sort of. Oh yeah. Like, mm-hmm. So that reminds me. So when you, you've done the camming here, um, can I give away a secret about what you use for lube? Uh, coconut oil. The coconut oil. I like coconut oil and I like spunk. Spunk is a brand. Yes. I assume. Spunk. Okay. It's a blend. Is it a, like when you say a blend? Like what does that mean? Water and oil, like a. Uh, oh, okay. uh, it's a water-based lubricant mixed with a silicone-based lubricant. There you okay. go, silicone. Okay. Sorry. So, so for those that are watching, with the because I I actually have coconut oil upstairs and, and normally when it's stored. Um, <laughs> no, my you, wife is like, wait a minute, is he used the coconut oil for lube? <laughs> like the old, the old Vaseline when you're 13 years old. I'll tell old. you how bad it is at my house. Uh, we go to the restaurant depot. We buy ketchup, this plastic, the ketchup squeeze, squeeze bottles. Right. I get about six of them. I get the big coconut oil from Costco. I melt it all down and I pour it in each one. And I put one in our bedroom, one in his, in his bedroom. One in my camera. You got to have them in all areas just in case. Just in case you just, you just to need to have, have it. Well, now I have a Pavlovian, Pavlovian response. Anytime I smell coconuts, I get a boner. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear You that. know it's time to fuck, baby. <laughs> Pavlovian, Pavlovian response. Smell coconut oil. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I'm drinking a pina colada with a heart on. <laughs> Pina colada. Well, so you don't go on vacation much in Mexico. Then. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. uh. So I think that's probably a good point. We're going to wrap up. Uh, Instagram only lets us do live for an hour, and I think we're at about 55 minutes. And I okay. know you've got to get ready for your uh, yes. 
for your photo shoot here. Uh, which it, was a, it was fun. This was really fun. I hope a few other people decide that they want to come in and, and join in because it's really nice to hear other people's experiences and, you know, share things. Yeah. And sometimes it's a good way if you're new in, in, in this lifestyle, it's, it's nice to, to get pointers. Yeah. So if you're a couple that's interested in doing this, um, you know, this is literally our first time doing this and we're using a new camera and a new setup or whatever, and we'll probably tweak this stuff after we watch it, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, so don't judge us on this one alone on how it looks because it, it may look terrible and the sound might be terrible. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in, if you're a couple, or even if you're single and you're interested in doing this, uh, you know, hit us up, send us an email. Um, but I really, really appreciate you doing this with us. No uh, problem. I had a good that time. Was great. I was really excited. I, there was so. I think I could have done this for two more hours because there was like a hundred million <laughs> things I wanted to ask you. More and stories. I, you can sit I'm down, sure have a beverage, have, and just I, chat. I am sure you have a ton of stories. <laughs> so, all right. So we're gonna we're gonna shut down here. I'm gonna shut down the um, the Facebook Live one here first, and then we'll shut down the Instagram. But I thank you very all right. much. All right. Great. No problem. See you guys. Thing. Maybe I'll see I'll you here take, at the club. Yeah. Awesome. We'll go ahead and take that off, and we'll. Uh, <laughs>